Welcome back to the Sooner Surge. Thanks so much for being part of the Sooner Surge. If you're not, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Join up. Be a part of what's going on here. Also, there's a couple things you can do to help out. You can go to the FanStop, fanstop.com. Check them out. Sign up for the Shirt of the Month Club. You get 10% off your order if you use code SURGE for the first three months. Also, make sure if you'd like to be part of the unlimited membership with Sooner Surge. There's a link in the description. You can join up. You can join the Discord, which is 24-7 talking with all of us in the community. It's great, especially before the season gets started. You're going to want to join that so we can chat during games. It's great, great kind of benefit and perk. So make sure you do that. Uh, this video, guys, we're going to talk about the wide receiver room. As season approaches, it's a it's a room that has been talked about all offseason. Uh, and even more specifically over the last few weeks with the injury of Jaden Gibson. Uh, it's a room that is very, very deep. And I think you're going to start to see that now with the Gibson injury. Uh, and it's going to maybe come to fruition how deep this room actually is uh, compared to last year. Uh, the big addition... Everybody's talking about Dion Burks. Uh, after last year, Dion Burks transfers in from Purdue. And what he has shown in the spring game and in the summer and fall camp and strength and conditioning, all of it, uh, looks to be like an outstanding portal uh, addition. Now, truth will be, we'll, we'll see it when on the field when it happens here August 30th. But so far, it looks like he's going to maybe be, uh, stat-wise, Maybe he will be the, the best receiver on this team. What do you guys think, Hunter? Well, I, I would be shocked if he's not. Uh, I mean, a, a top five, top ten transfer portal wide receiver. A lot of movement in the wide receiver uh, world this offseason in the transfer portal. And Deion Burks is one of the best to leave his former school, transferring from Purdue to Oklahoma. Emmett Jones adding him to a room that, again, before the Jaden Gibson injury was – very, very deep. And even after the Jaden Gibson injury, unfortunately for him, going to miss the, re the entire 2024 season with an injury, it is still a very deep and loaded room. It's Emmett Jones has continued to build this room up. If Oklahoma can get Andrew Anthony and Joel Farouk back and get them back early to 100% as they're coming off of injuries, Andrew Anthony, the ACL injury a year ago, uh, Farouk, some uh, foot issues through. Uh, the spring football. So, I, I mean, you look, Deion Burks in the spring game, five catches, two touchdowns, both of the touchdowns, over 50 yards, 64 yards and 50 yards, 174 yards. I mean, he's the deep threat, a, an explosive wide receiver. The fact that Oklahoma was able to bring him into, again, a very deep room to begin with it is a, a testament to the type of recruiter that Emmett Jones is because just about everyone wanted to be able to land the Deion Burks, a guy that's going to be drafted whenever he does declare for the draft within the first two days, uh, what he was able to do at Purdue, now going to the SEC at Oklahoma. Andrew Anthony last year, 429 yards. He missed everything after uh, the first six weeks of the season, injured in the Texas game, and he was very impressive. Nick Anderson, 798 yards as a redshirt freshman. A year ago. Uh, I think that there's so much talent in that room, and that's just the top end guys you're, we're talking about right now in Burks, Anthony, Farouk, Anderson, those four. You also have Brennan Thompson. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. There, There's a lot of depth in this room for Oklahoma, and I think it's going to be one of the best uh, wide receiver rooms in the SEC and all of college football. Yeah, Hunter, you talked about it the depth in the wide receiver room is incredible. What Emmett Jones has been able to build here at Oklahoma ever since he stepped foot on campus and was hired as wide receivers coach has been very impressive. And you talk about just the likes of Dion Burks, Nick Anderson, Jaleel Farouk, Andrew Anthony, Jaquez Petaway, Brendan Thompson, uh, Ivan Carrion, J.J. Hester. There's eight guys right there that I just named that could potentially – see the field in some sort of role throughout this season. It's an incredibly deep wide receiver room, one in which is lo is loaded with several NFL guys, as Hunter said in Dion Burks. If Farouk has a good enough year, I would not be shocked if he ends up getting drafted. If Andrew Anthony gets back to being healthy and if he is able to produce like he was whenever he was healthy in his first year at Oklahoma last year, 
there's the potential that he maybe could be in the NFL as well. So you just talk about uh, a lot of NFL guys for Jackson Arnold, a super talented room. And Jackson Arnold is definitely very fortunate to have this kind of talent in a wide receiver room year one going into the SEC. Yeah, and I do think the Andrell, Andrell Anthony, uh, how he overcomes that injury and how he looks, I think is a big, big part of this offense, though. Uh, because I think, we, like Hunter mentioned his stats from last year before he got injured, he was unbelievable, uh, stretching the field and everything. So I think it is a very important uh, – he, he's going to play an important part. And, and you mentioned J.J. Hester – uh, Jackson as a guy that, yeah, I mean, he has not played really at OU, but there is a lot of talk about him right now, maybe filling one of those spots. Uh, so I agree. I, I go back and I do wonder how deep they will go. When I say deep, how deep will they go as far as good amount of playing time? Will they go five deep? Will they go six deep? I'm interested to see that, how they do. I think early on they do that more. But I think by the time you get to SEC playing Tennessee, they're down to, I would say, five guys that they're really rotating in maybe six, Hunter. I, I don't know. I'm thinking six. You think six? I will see. Yeah. Here's, here's, here's the thing. Burks, you mentioned, we talked a little bit about Burks earlier. Last year, Drake Stoops, go look at his numbers. Drake Stoops is unbelievable. Guys, if, if they throw the ball to Burks as much as they threw it to Stoops, they, the guy's going to be up for the Heisman. I, 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 I'm serious. Cause I think he's that Hunter. He's that athletic and that. I, I, I get what you're saying. I wouldn't say Heisman, Blit and Cough, possibly. But what I'm but, saying is yes. I think what he can do with the ball, and nothing against Stoops, but what he can do with the ball in his hands, I mean, if he catches the ball 12 times a game like Stoops does down the stretch, last three or four games, Stoops was catching the ball 10 or 12 times a game. I mean, Burks is going to put up insane numbers in that, and if that's the case. Yeah, and again, if that's the case, I don't think that will be the case for Oklahoma. I'm interested. I, I don't, I, I don't think there's going to be with again. I mean, you mentioned the top four. You also throw in JJ Hester, Brennan Thompson. That gets you to six right there. Uh, Jaden Gibson out for the year, but again, that I, I don't think you're going to see any receiver with twelve catches again with that much that talent in that room. Yeah, like it's I, – I don't think you're going to see that again this year. Uh, if Deion Burks was the guy zeroed in in that slot with how, again, what you were saying about how well Drake Stoops did last year, you look at Deion Burks, I mean, the potential to be a, a first two-day draft pick, a top three round guy, probably even top two rounds if everything goes uh, the way that Deion Burks wants it to go at Oklahoma. But yeah, he's going to have a, a thousand yards and maybe even more for that pushing for possibly a Blintenkoff. But even then, I, I don't think anyone's going to have enough targets and enough catches to be able to give them the the Blintenkoff award or the the a, a chance of going to New York. I, I think it's going to be a lot more evenly balanced uh, across the board in that. So region. So y'all, you're thinking six. I think Jackson nodded with six. Six mm-hmm. is kind of the reason. Six so, to seven. It, so oh. who who are the? Let's just say who are your six then? I mean, if you think it's going to be six, who do you think it is? I mean, we all know go, Anderson, Anderson, yeah. Farouk, Burks, and Andrew Anthony. Lance. I, that's four. So yeah, the other yeah. two spots, who do you think's getting the majority of the of the snaps if, on this day? I know we haven't started the season yet at Oklahoma. They have not started. But who would the other two be, guys? I, I think it would be JJ Hester and Brennan Thompson. And that's yeah, just I agree. Yeah. And you know, I think that there's an argument that Brennan Thompson is the X factor of this wide receiver room this year. Because when Dion Burks is going to need rest, you're going to need someone that's going to be able to come into the slot, be able to open up the field, probably going to need to make some big plays this year for this team. Uh, we saw. In the, Alamo, in the Alamo Bowl that Jackson Arnold, one of his favorite targets, was Brennan Thompson, right? And so it's like, can Brennan Thompson come in and make plays for Deion Burks? Because we all know if Deion Burks is healthy, he's going to be one of the best wide receivers in the SEC. I think we all can agree with that. He's going to be one of the better wide receivers in the country as well. So it's how is someone going to be able to come in that is backing up a guy like Deion Burks? How are they going to be able to play? And also – a name that gets forgotten about, and this is a name I really thought was going to play last year, that was Jaquez Petaway. 
I mean, outside of the Arkansas State game, you didn't hear he, anything. He didn't from really him. play other than special no. teams after that. I mean, the only other moment other than maybe the Alamo Bowl that I can really remember was the special teams play that was called back and the reverse they tried to run on the special teams between him and Farouk. I mean, other than that, I mean, he had nine catches against Arkansas State, nothing yeah. else. Uh, it, it's a deep wide receiver room. I think you saw that last year, and it's just as deep this year. Yeah, and as we close here, I mean, you, you guys mentioned six or seven guys. Haven't talked about it. I'd love to know people's thoughts after they watch the video. Like, any chance a freshman, Ivan Carrion, Zion Kearney, Zion Raggins, uh, any chance they get in? We'll see. Uh, they might get in for a little snaps, I think, early on. As far as playing time throughout the year, it's hard for me to put any of them above those top six or seven y'all mentioned. So that, that's I, I, Agree, Jay. And I think with those three names you mentioned, I think all three of them will not redshirt. Yeah. But I, I don't agree. think they're going to see the field a lot outside of the first few weeks, potentially, if everything goes to play in Oklahoma, get some big leads in those first three non-conference games. Uh, I, I don't think they're after that or after Maine, even the fourth non-conference game in November, going to see a whole lot of playing time at the wide receiver position. I think all three of them will be active on special teams, potentially, and, and not red shirt. But again, there there's a lot of talent in that wide receiver room. There is a lot of talent in that room, even with the unfortunate and just devastating injury for Jaden Gibson. Really feel for him. Thought he was going to have a breakout year. So that does stink. Hopefully he comes back ready to go next year. But it's a room that's very exciting to watch. I think Emmett Jones, the way he coaches those guys, how physical they are, you can see it even in the slot. I mean, I think Burks would be a very physical receiver in the slot. So uh, excited to watch that group. Uh, this year as they put up really good numbers, I believe. Thanks for watching the video. We appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe. Till next time.